Welcome to Fish and Hunt, I'm Dave Butfield. On this week's show, we've got a special guest, Robbie Rocco from the Newcastle Knights. Mate, great to have you along. Thank you very much, Dave. Mate, uh, Bo's away at the uh, State of Origin camp, so he uh, hopefully can have a good game on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, so he's getting prepared for the game, so uh, he couldn't make it out today, and I'm happy to fill his shoes and hopefully pull up a few more fish than what we did the other day. That's right. Today, we're going for big kingfish. We've heard some big kings off the coast and over the 10, 20 kilo mark, so I'm pretty excited and hopefully we can get one, but you've got to get one on, Bo, because the other day we went out, and he cut you off. Yeah, we're both jigging off the bottom and uh, lines got tangled up, he got his and mine snapped off, so I'm hoping <laughs> they're gonna be able to send him a few picks after today. And we'll be trying a few different techniques, some jigging, uh, we've got some bay rubbers there, and also some live baits and down rigging, so jam-packed show. We've got Pedro LeBlanc from Harbour and SU Fishing Charters coming out to give us a hand, and also Louis Lengel from Otto's Tackle World in Des Moines. So Louis's gonna talk about some gear and the outfits we're using. And mate, I'm pretty excited, so I reckon, look at the weather, it's perfect today. Yeah, it looks beautiful here off Collaroy Beach, so hopefully we can uh, get into it now. All right, well, let's get some baits in the water and go and catch some fish. Trying to survive, barely getting by. Feels like a lifetime till payday Come the weekend, I'm gone again Fishing my cares away So if I hook a big one Or I hook a small one I'm hooked on fishing again I'm hooked on fishing again All right, we're gonna get our yakka, put our bait needle on. I'm gonna stick that through the top of his nine, not into his eye, it just is a little groove. Slippery little suckers. <laughs> just at the top. Stick that through, like so. Take that off. We're gonna put that on our knee, on our hook. Okay, twist it. Put it back through. Ready to go. Now, a lot of people use um, downrigger clicks. I don't like them. I'd rather you use elastic bands a lot easier. So, what we're going to do is get our elastic band around our braid and probably wrap it about, uh, about eight times, ten times. Like so. And then I'm going to stick that in there like so, and that's our elastic band. Now all we're going to do now is clip that on to our clip. We've just got a normal snap clip there. So we'll put that on like so, lock that up, and that's pretty much ready to go. Now all we need to do now is open the bail arm and lower the downrigger. Okay, there's 80, so we've got down to about 20 metres. Now we're going to load our rod back up and set our drag. So we'll wind that in till we get that rod loaded up. Not too hard, you'll snap your rubber band. Just like that, we're loaded. We've got a bit of drag on there, so fish does hit. We haven't got it too tight. Um, so what he'll do, will come up behind that yakka, grab it, pull it, and that rod will spring back up and hopefully help set the hook as well. So uh, that's our yakka out there. As you saw before, Dave just put one on the downrigger. We're gonna chuck one on the surface and uh, hopefully a kingy can come up and grab it. Huh? 
Well, we just had a hit, which is a good sign, and uh, didn't leave much of the fish left, Robbie. <laughs> just as big. <laughs> just as big, that's about it. So um, we'll re-rig that up, that's a good sign. So we've only been here, what, 15 minutes? Yeah, just slow trolling for about 10, 15 minutes now, and saw a few archers on the sounder, so hopefully we can go over a few more, and yeah. one will grab it. We'll get another bait out, and uh, we've got one on the surface there at the moment. Oop. One on the surface, and, um, and one on the downrigger. So, if we find that we're getting a lot of hits on the downrigger, we can swap that around and put the poor man's downrigger out, which we use a jig with a bit of weight to get it down there. So, but looking at the sander at the moment, there's a lot of fish around. So, hopefully, they'll come on the bite very shortly. This week's Berkeley Catch of the Week goes to Stephen Fitzgerald. Stephen caught these red-tailed catfish in Thailand. It looks like they put up a great fight. For these great photos, we'll be sending you a Berkeley prize pack in the mail real soon. Send your photos into hooktv at bigpond.com for your chance to win. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Good work. It's not well, big. It's not big. It was <laughs> on the yakka. That was well. That's on the surface, mate. So it might be a little tuna. Who knows? It could be anything, eh? Hey? Take any drag off? Nah. It's pretty pretty loose at the moment, so I'm not. Yeah. Oh, it might be a little yeah. kingy. Yeah, little kingy. Little kingy. There we go. We're getting a bit of colour now. Oh, you lost him. Oh, you just hung on to him. It was just hanging on to him. Good work, Lou. Lou's seen that one. I'll pull that down rigger in. Definitely a bit more size on this one. Yeah, and this is on the 6500 Saltiga. So definitely a uh, heavier outfit. Good work, Lou. Lou caught that one. And um, we're just talking about that little fish. He's just nearly up now. Got a bit of colour. There you <laughs> go. So, There's one. There's one. Got a bit of clarity, but it's definitely a legal fish, so mate, good work. Yep, it's the first one, so um, we just dropped a smaller one just I know. before. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so it's getting a little bit worried, but at least we've at least we've bagged one now. So um, yeah. hopefully there's some bigger ones about. And this one's coming home anyway. That's why we gaffed him because we knew knew he was legal. You'd see straight away. And uh, um, one was just chasing the yakka that uh, we had out the back again just then. You always get to follow us. So you know, and like I said, it's, we've been here for pre an hour. Had a bit of a slow run. We had a hit to start off with. And then we had that one that followed, and then the downrigger went yeah, off. Yeah, we were discussing some other options, but I'm glad we sort of persisted. Um, it's not quite Bo's 90 centimetre one from the other day, but hopefully we can top that soon. Yeah, exactly. So, but uh, like, like Robbie just said, just be patient. There's fish on the screen, and sometimes it just takes that tide change or anything, and they just come on the bite. So, mate, we'll get him in the ice box, and uh, we'll get uh, some more baits out. Beautiful. Good work. Middle of the tide, and the kings weren't playing the game. So a quick change to the Berkeley gulps to fill in the time. Mate, you did you didn't even jig that? We put a plastic out there just to see what would happen. And <laughs> you didn't even jig not, that. It's not a bad fish. It you didn't one, even jig it. One or two pulls off the bottom and he's giving me a bit of a run here, actually. <laughs> that's crazy. Just want to tighten this down. <laughs> oh. Yeah, first cast of that nemesis. I know, that's ridiculous. We put a, a Berkeley Nemesis on there in the nuclear chicken is probably the most, most popular colour around, especially for flathead. Yeah. Snapper. snapper! Nice snapper yes. too! Woo -hoo. You got a net? No, I haven't got a net. <laughs> a nice snapper! Oh, a good size one. Yes. <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> oh my god! Okay, the... oh. Mate! Well done! Well, that's uh, a great snapper. Were we trying to catch bait or were we trying to go for snapper? <laughs> I tell you, that just hit the bottom. We are just chatting and uh, that's, mate, that's a great snapper. Yeah, we just decided to throw in a few soft plastics rather than that slow trawl and first cast. Great snapper, well done. I'll get a photo of that. Yep, for sure. And uh, I reckon we get some more plastics down. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thanks, right. Okay, <laughs> he's ready to go. Louis's ready to go. All right, good work. Back on the trawl with the liveys. 
and after 15 minutes, Robbie comes up trumps. Oh, I'll get it. Get that gaff behind the gaff. Get the gaff. Ready, I'm ready. Hang on. My hip, my hip. Come on, Robbie. I'll get the gaff because this is going to be a legal fish. I'm going to keep a couple. Well, that that was just like light. And we got it's some still pulling drag. And we got some drag on that at the moment. We probably got eight, nine kilo, ten kilos of drag. Bring it in there. Oh, oh Jesus! Don't come off. Bring him up slow, just slow. Just drag him over slow. <laughs> well done, mate. Well, that's the king we're after, and I reckon that's what I just got done with. And mate, I cranked that drag right up, yeah. and it was still pulling off. Yeah, it was still pulling all the way to the boat, and um, taking line on on what we've got a heavy set up there. So, mate, she was a good fight. I'm jumping in, Lou. Tell me. That's a nice king, mate. Oh, mate, and before what you hooked up, that I reckon would have been very similar. Yeah, good fish, good fish. Yeah, so, well, that's what you can get out here, and if you persist and be patient, like, you know, we've come here this morning, you know, lost a couple, got one, got a snapper, moved out further, had no thing, come back again, and look, the afternoon, that tide change, got a little bit of blood there, but he's, he's going to come home for dinner anyway. He wanted to keep a couple. Yeah, yeah. And you can take him home, mate. And, yeah, we uh, spent a lot of time chasing them, so, <laughs> mate, to get the big ones were what we wanted. That's it, exactly. Hi, I'm Jackie M, and I'm a Malaysian restauranteur and street food specialist. And I'm going to show you today how you can use some of the seafood that uh, you might catch out fishing in a beautiful laksa. Now, laksa tends to be a little bit complicated to make because there are a lot of ingredients that go into it, but I've got a little cheat for you and I'm going to be using a dolly curry laksa paste today. So um, have a look for this at major Asian grocery stores. You should be able to find it. I've just got some water boiling over here and I'm just going to toss some, this whole packet of uh, laksa paste in it. Okay, so I've got the laksa paste in, and I'm just going to throw in some coconut milk. I like my coconut milk, so I'm putting a whole can in. Now I'm using Aroy D because it's got a really, really nice natural coconut flavour, and you can pick this up at Asian grocery stores as well. Dave got me some of these lovely fish, flathead, and some prawns. I'm going to throw these into my laksa soup. And then you're just going to let this simmer for a couple of minutes. It won't take long because the uh, flathead fillets are quite thin and the prawns won't take long to cook at all. So just give it a couple of minutes. Now, in the meantime, what I've done earlier, I've got some of these noodles. You can get any type of noodles, but these are actually uh, rice sticks, okay? And again, it's an ROD brand and you can pick these up at most Asian grocery stores as well. Now, all you need to do with this is just soak the packet in some warm water heat up some water in a saucepan and then just toss them in and boil them for about five minutes and this is what you'll get. I've got here some cucumber that's cut into um, sticks like this and some herbs, I've got some coriander and some spring onion and some chilies. Now you can use any kind of vegetables you like so uh, laksa is one of those things that are really really versatile so um, whatever you can find in your fridge or at your local grocery store, go for your life. Okay, the flavours are really, really coming through now. And it smells fantastic. Now it's just a matter of waiting for this to be ready. I'm just going to turn this up a little bit. If you don't know much about Malaysian cooking, Malaysia uh, is essentially famous for its food and the reason for that partly I believe is because really I like to describe it as the original fusion cuisine because it brings in all the best elements of uh, the different cooking styles and uh, ingredients of the different 
ethnic groups in Malaysia, the Malays, the Chinese, the Indians, the Eurasians, um, or, or you name it. So what you get are like uh, Chinese influenced ingredients like noodles and Malay influenced ingredients like the, 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 the spices and that sort of stuff and also Indian spices and all that good stuff as well. So you what you end up with is something like a laksa it really combines all these different elements so it's fabulous. And if you've got tofu puffs, you can throw those in as well. Usually, you know, or you can throw in a, you know, boil some eggs separately and throw in half a boiled egg and that would be just really, really lovely. Okay, I'm just gonna dish this up. So there you go, doesn't this look fantastic? This has taken me all of five minutes, if that. And that's my laksa. Now I'm just going to uh, jazz it up a little bit more because I like my fried shallots. And again, this is a uh, fried shallots from Malaysia that you can pick up at your local Asian grocery store. Just toss a bit over the top. And another dolly ingredient I'm really a big fan of is this one here called the crispy prawn chili. Okay, it's very very versatile. You can use it in stir fries and that sort of stuff. Now you can use this as a condiment. I'm just gonna spoon some over the top of my laksa. And there you go. And I'm just gonna throw in a bit more greens over here. Now, if you like this recipe, you can actually go to my website. It's jackiem.com.au slash fish. And I've got a special page there for you where you can subscribe to be able to download this recipe and a whole bunch of other recipes. Um, and I will show you where you can buy all these lovely ingredients specific locations where you can find them in Australia and the other thing I'm going to send you through as well is uh, all my Asian cooking secrets and techniques that I've learned over 20 years of running an Asian food business okay the sort of information I wish I had when I was uh, doing my own research and teaching myself how to cook uh, beautiful Asian and Malaysian food the other thing you can do is just send a text message to 0437 triple three oh seven five just send the word jackie m one word j-a-c-k-i-e-m and i'll subscribe you to my mailing list and send you all this fabulous information as well and show you how you can learn to cook like a malaysian restaurateur okay so that's my laksa here looking really pretty fabulous and i'm just going to try some of this Mmm, it's fantastic and I'm really hungry so I'm going to go away and eat this now. Oh no! <laughs> Louis, that is the smallest <laughs> king! Well. <laughs> oh, small. Okay, just talk about some of the gear we use today. We're using the big reels, we also use some of the little reels today. This is the new Daiwa Blast, it's a great reel. Not too much, around about the $200 mark. This matched up with a nice generation black 5 to 10 kilo rod. It's a brilliant setup for small kings as you saw, but you can use it on soft plastics, micro jigging, all those other things you can use it on. They hold about 300 meters of 30 pound braid if you're using the good Daiwa braid. Get that down rigger out of the way. How you going there, bud? Winning? Yeah, good. Just trying to keep him off the bottom. He's up on the surface now. Oh. <laughs> All right, Robbie. <laughs> I caught him finally up. So yeah. this is one of the little ones that kept checking out that um, that hoodlum that we had out the back. That's and, right, exactly. Uh, finally managed to hook one because we weren't going quite fast enough. So I started casting and, and jigging it back in and working it around and uh, hooked one. Not as big as the last couple, but um, you know, we're, we're having a bit of fun with them anyway. How you going there, buddy? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, just just uh, saw some bait jumping off the surface and threw a big soft plastic into the middle of it and straight away. Mate, I was just about ready to pack up. I just cut my lure off and you have to hook up for me. <laughs> All right, I'll just get, I'm gonna get that little stick bait on. What'd you get it on? That was on a Nemesis, was it? Yeah, 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 just a uh, seven inch um, blue colored. Oh, that's a uh, blue shiner. Yeah, blue shiner. Oh, we're on here too, Dave. Yeah. You're on, Louie's on. We've got a double hookup oh. on the other side of the boat. Fish, oh, yes. yes, 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 yes. And we're on. Yes. Woo, triple hookup. <laughs> triple. 
Oh, there's one on the boat. That's, that's legal. That's a legal fish too, Lou. <laughs> Good work, mate. Just right beside the boat. Oh, Beautiful. Really See if Pete can get that. Good work, Pete. Oh. Come on, Dave. We'll get oh, I'm triple, trying, mate. I'm trying to get triple, it up. Shot, triple, triple shot here. We're waiting triple, for you. There we go. Oh, he's busted me off. Oh, he busted me off. He busted me off. Here, yeah, Pete, give us that rod. <laughs> I can't let these boys... Boys are going to... Kill me. Oh, no. Oh, I've had the worst luck today. Boys, have got two kings. Look at that. Two kings there. I did have the third. Water. I'll get mine back in water. We'll take him around for dinner, that one. That one go for dinner. Excellent. Go on your way. <laughs> Good fun today. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. The last uh, few fish were just amazing. Great fun and light tackle. And, uh, mate, you got that big one. And we could stick it up, Bo, because... Uh, <laughs> The other week, uh, Bo cut him off, and it was a good fish as well, but uh, today, you, mate, you kicked his butt. Yeah, no, that big king, he definitely made the day, but um, as you saw at the end there, we had so much fun, just saw the schools of bait getting smashed on the surface, and we threw a few soft plastics and whatever we had left of them yakas, and, mate, it was a great time towards the end of it, and uh, mate, thanks for today. Mate, it's a pleasure, and we'll get you on some more shows, and, and good luck tonight, mate, because I know you've got to play footy, <laughs> so well done. Uh, now, Louis, uh, all the gear we used on today's show we can get from your Tackle World store? Yeah, just come down to Otto's Tackle World in Dremoyne and the guys will look after you. We'll do our best to service you. <laughs> yes, and they've got all the gear. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing how much tackle you can fit in that store, mate. It's uh, pretty impressive. So drop down and see Louie and the gang and they will look after you. And we've got to thank one more person. Over in the corner, he's been uh, keeping out of the camera all show. Peter LeBlanc from Harbour and Estuary Fish and Charters. A great bloke. And if you want to have a great time, give him a call because you'll have some uh, you know, great fishing action as we did. And as you've seen today, big kingfish, a nice snapper that Robbie got and uh, give him a call because the name and number's up on the screen right now. I hope you enjoyed the show. We've all had a fantastic day. You're watching Fishing Hunt. I'm Dave Butfield and I'll see you next week somewhere around Australia. I'm gone again Fishing my cares away So if I hook a big one Or I hook a small one I'm hooked on fishing again I'm hooked on fishing again